Welcome to MH2801 video segment on the direct delta function as a distribution. Now in the previous video segment, we have talked about how the direct delta function delta x minus a is equal to the limit of a family of parameterized uh, functions. Uh, for example, the uh, rectangular function with a uh, unit area. So this is one way to think of the direct delta function. But of course, the limit of a family of functions need not be a function itself. In fact, it very frequently is a distribution. A distribution is a mathematical object that always go together with a uh, integration. So what that means is that whenever we write, say, a distribution, rho of x, we do not write rho x and treat it as if it is a function. We always write it together with dx. And then the, the aim is, that, is then later to integrate it over all x's, whether or not we plan to uh, integrate it alone or uh, after multiplying by a function. Uh, that's what we plan to do. So the two ingredients to being a distribution, and that is this whole thing is to be treated as one entity, and then this is the function that it is to be multiplied to, and then it is to be integrated. So uh, for a distribution, we always have to uh, talk about the uh, distribution function multiplied by a, uh, a, an element of an integral, and then multiply it by some function and then integrate it over. So this is the distribution uh, together with dx. So therefore, if the direct delta function is to be treated as a distribution, again, we will need to write it in this manner, delta x minus a times dx. And then we can then choose to uh, either integrate it all by itself or multiply it by a function and then integrate from minus infinity to infinity. So thinking, so what you what you should think of at when you when you treat the direct delta function is to think of it as some kind of a probability distribution. So this is to be treated as some kind of probability distribution. So uh, our most familiar concept of distributions come from the study of probability theory. So if we integrate just the direct delta function by itself, then by virtue of it being a distribution, uh, we must have it be normalized. So this is equals to 1. Okay, and then the alternative, uh, alternatively, if we are going to integrate it along with a different, uh, another function, so f of x is a, a actual function itself, which means that it can be considered by itself without uh, having dx multiplied to it. So if this is, uh, if this is the integral that we are, if that we're considering, that means here we have the distribution. And here we have the function and then integrate over from minus infinity to infinity then the result must be equals to f of a this is the localization property of the direct delta function and actually this is a weak localization uh, property there is a stronger way to define the uh, to write the localization property and that is to write this as a minus epsilon, a plus epsilon, fx delta x minus a dx equals to fa. So this is the strong localization property, which says that the contribution to the, the final integral value of fa comes only within the tiny interval uh, between a minus epsilon and a plus epsilon, where epsilon is actually a very small number. So this is not, this f of a, you know, from the first integral, uh, we know that it is not the result of uh, different, va different uh, the, con the function values at different axes uh, contributing in a, a very bizarre way uh, in unison to produce the uh, function value f of a, all of this function value is contributed by this tiny little uh, interval a minus epsilon and a plus epsilon. So when we think of the direct delta function as a distribution, 
all we have to do is to state the normalization condition, state either the weak localization condition or the strong localization condition, and then the rest we will just make full use of these two properties.